Hello, Timo, and let me officially welcome you to the Data Innovation Summit here in Stockholm. Thank it's, you very uh, much. Really a pleasure and an honor having you with us. Uh, before we go on, can you please tell us a bit more about yourself and, and your background? Okay, my name is Timo Elliott and mm -hmm. I'm an innovation evangelist mm -hmm. for SAP. And for the last 30 years, I've been working in analytics, helping persuade business people about the power of data. 30 years, Timo. Okay, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, data innovation, data-driven innovation is changing the world. Um, and can you give some interesting examples of how our organizations actually excelling in this area? Because so the, the, the biggest thing that's changing is that data is moving from just analytics, helping yeah. business people make better decisions, to becoming the heart of the new digital business models of the future. Mm -hmm. So data is becoming an intrinsic part of most of the customer interfaces. It's changing the customer experience. Everybody wants a personalized, unique, context sensitive experience. You go shopping, yeah. you expect the supplier to know who you are, what you're interested in, yeah. and base it on your demographics and what you're interested in, and not show you things that you're not interested in. That's spam. So the data is no longer just about some executive, a CIO, looking at reports going, here's what I should take with my business. It's something that's a fundamental part of what their pro the products they're selling. So that is really changing the attitudes towards data in the organization. It's not just a cost center. Mm -hmm. All of that money that's gone into the investments of infrastructure is now part of the profit center for the organization. Mm -hmm. But, but, but Timo, this process um, is not easy, I guess. So. From your perspective, what are the biggest or the most common challenges, hinders that uh, organizations face toward this, along this journey? And on the other hand, what are the implications of not uh, being uh, available to overcome these challenges? So the one, number one thing, as ever, is that the difficulties are almost never to do with the technology. Mm. In fact, the biggest technology problem that most organizations have today, the ones I talk to, are saying that there's so many opportunities they don't really know where to start or mm. what steps to take. And they also figure, say, okay, I know we could do things, but how do we get there from where we are today with our existing complex internal IT systems? So the biggest thing to do, though, is the first and biggest step to take is a big step back. Way too many organizations start by trying to identify a small opportunity and say, well, we'll use the new technology to automate that, to take what we're already doing today and automate it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whereas the big opportunity is to completely rethink what we've been doing, rethink how we can use this technology to change the customer experience. So we've been investing a lot in uh, design thinking. Mm -hmm. So in particular, this is where you sit down and think about your customer journey. What are all the interactions that customers have with you as a company? And how could you use these latest technologies to optimize every touch point? We're moving from an information age to an experience age. And um, being able to use data as a key part of that is uh, important for business models. You look super skeptical, but why? Uh, no, no, it's just, uh, <laughs> no, it's just, I'm trying to really... Understand really, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. <laughs> So it's um, quite a great example. Well, so we worked with uh, uh, Stara, for example. They make things like tractors. And they've been in the tractor business for a long time. But we, they used our Internet of Things platform to move from selling machinery to creating an integrated digital farming system. So a system of interlocking technologies to optimize every aspect of the farmer's role and job. So uh, one small example, each tractor has an infrared sensor that can detect exactly how much fertilizer to add to each individual plant. So the result is that the farmer ends up using a lot less fertilizer, so it's massively lower costs from them. It's much more sustainable, so it's good news for the farmers, it's good news for Stara. It makes uh, their investment in tractors easier to uh, purchase. And it's good news for the world because it's better farming system. So, you know, GPS, satellites, analytics for the farmers. Uh, farmers are some of the most digitally aware people now thanks to these new systems. And again, it's analytics. 
they're looking at maps and numbers and optimizing, but it's not traditional business ex uh, decisions. It's a new customer experience powered by Internet of Things, plus uh, big data, plus big data storage, plus analytics, machine learning, algorithms. All of that combined together to repackage existing products and services in new ways. Mm -hmm. So, um, for those organizations that have just started this journey, yes. Um, and from your experience, what would be some of the recommendations? Where should they focus? What should be prioritized? Uh, one good place to start is work with a company that's been helping organizations optimize and automate their complex business processes for the last 40 years, mm -hmm. like SAP. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but it, it, okay. it really is about, first of all, uh, focusing on the, the business experience. Um, it used to be that IT was a bit of an ivory tower and the business people would come and say, okay, we need uh, an ERP system, we need some analytics, and uh, IT would take down long notes about what they needed and then would provide it. Now it has to be much more of a partnership and it has to be much more of a business-led partnership. But it's not just about IT trying to provide things. Uh, the business people don't know what is possible today and they're not necessarily good at understanding how to translate what's possible in the business to these new technologies. So it, it has to work both ways. The business people don't necessarily have the creativity to reimagine the experience, because they're used to doing it the old way. Mm -hmm. IT yeah. understands the new opportunities, but doesn't necessarily know enough about the business to know how to, exp oh, to explore yeah, yeah. that. Again, going back to the design thinking, it's a great place to start. So it's a methodology that brings the business and IT and the people on the ground, the customer facing people, together in a room and then um, create uh, prototypes. And a lot of these prototypes are on paper initially. So it's literally sheets of paper that you can go to a potential customer and say, well, if we offered you this kind of service and it looked a bit like this, would you be interested? And they say, well, no, because, and then you iterate. And that's a bit, that flexible, agile approach. That's what's really new about the new generation of technologies. Mm -hmm. um, uh, your presentation title was uh, From Information to Income. Yes. So it's like a monetize. Using, using the lessons of digital business to yeah. transform analytics. Can you, can you do a, a, a short recap of, about your presentation? So, the, fundamentally, it was about this change of new business models, um, talking about the technologies that are available very briefly, but then the, the methodologies to turn that into new data with some examples. So we talked about Stara. Um, uh, what else could I mention? Oh, a great one was uh, Vestas. Mm -hmm. So they're the uh, Danish company, the number one in wind turbines. And they have uh, lots of traditional IT but they were looking to start a project using these new agile techniques. And they ended up creating essentially an analytic app for moving cranes from one place to another. They'd been using a very manual process, lots of whiteboards. Mm -hmm. um, and so we worked with them to create a design thinking team. Again, business, IT, crane operators. Brought them together in our design thinking labs, in uh, our centers, and they created a prototype, an application. Uh, on an iPad, mobile, so it could be used out on the sites. And they are rolling it out this year. They're hoping to save a million euros in costs. And that was the result of three weeks of iterative prototyping. And then, you know, an extra month to get it production against the real uh, data. But it's a lovely example. And, and the big takeaway from talking to them was, yes, big chunk of money saved, that's wonderful. But it really was the new relationship between IT and the business mm -hmm. that this new, more agile way of using data had, uh, had fostered. Again, data is a great place to start with these new agile methods. Mm -hmm. and, and what about technology in, in, in all this? How big, what about technology? What is uh, its portion in all of this? How big part plays? So the technology is something we focus too much on in general, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's essential. We can't do any of this without the new technologies. The key is to treat the different technologies as ingredients in a recipe. So imagine you're baking a meal for your favorite customer. According to what industry you're in, there'll be different types of ing ingredients needed. A bit of Internet of Things. To make it complete. Yeah, to make it tasty. 
a uh, bit of blockchain, a uh, bit of machine learning. So those ingredients brought together, uh, and that's a good chef, takes good quality ingredients that have been nicely prepared, but above all, it's the skill of the chef. And it's all too easy to focus on the ingredients and not the cooking. Um, so it's how you bring those together. And it's, it's, a, it's a new a skill. And again, we've launched something called a SAP Leonardo, where we pre-packaged some of the recipes, if you like. So if you're in sports and entertainment, or you're in um, pharmaceuticals, or you have a supply chain problem, we've already identified ready-to-make meals. <laughs> like the different technology ingredients and the recipe, we've already done those, we've already made the meal, we've already worked with other companies in your industry doing those sorts of things, right? And now we're going to go and make it easy for you to get started. And so, what about the future? So the future... The near future. I, the one thing I'm particularly excited about is um, the analogy I used in the presentation is uh, Tesla cars. Yeah. So uh, they're essentially become a massively parallel learning machine because let's say, um, uh, I know in Sweden you have uh, the occasional problems with uh, wildlife and the road, right? You're in the middle of nowhere, there's an elk and, or a moose uh, coming out of you out of the, out of the dark. Now, because Tesla has more cars on the road than anybody else, mm -hmm. and because the Tesla self-driving system has algorithms, mm -hmm. it has met more moose on the roads than anybody else, mm -hmm. so that your car, that's never met a moose, mm -hmm. uh, knows how to deal with it more effectively. So the algorithms in learning over time how to drive better on different roads in different conditions. So it's automatically getting better the more people drive, the more people drive the cars. Uh -huh. Right? So mm -hmm. it, this mm -hmm. notion of automatically improving services. Um, and most companies today don't have product services or inter internal processes that automatically get better over time and as people use them. But machine learning, they can. We've already done it successfully for things like uh, finance. So things like invoice matching. Sorry, mm -hmm. it's fairly obscure, but you, uh, you've issued an invoice, you've, people have paid you the money, the information is in the bank, and then you have to line it up. You have to figure out which invoices match which payments. But in real life, it's very complicated. There are two payments, two for one invoice, two invoices for one payment, references numbers don't add up. So in most organizations, you're lucky to get maybe 70% matching automatically. The rest of the 30% has to go to rooms full of people that are just lining up. Did, which, which was it? It's perfect for machine learning. It's pattern recognition. So uh, we worked with a large chemicals company. They went from 70% to 96% matching in two weeks. In two weeks. And that represents a massive savings in time, money, and effort. And the algorithm continues to learn from the remaining exceptions. So it's automatically getting better over time and as more people use it. That's one example in one small branch of finance. There are hundreds of those in finance, thousands of those across your enterprise. Uh, Gartner thinks that we're going to say that half a billion users uh, be, will save two hours a day uh, this year thanks to this kind of approach. And the easiest way to do it is embedding it in business applications uh, like SAP. So there's no company better positioned on the planet to help organizations get value from their artificial intelligence than SAP. That's great. Um, uh, Timo, uh, it was really a pleasure and an honor, as I said, not for me, but for the whole team. Uh, and uh, let me thank you again for being part of Data Innovation Summit.